Welcome to Revenue Cycle Management for Critical Access Hospitals. This webinar is sponsored by the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health. What are revenue cycle functions? Service-based structures? It includes everything from pre-service through the administrative functions, including delivering the service and capturing the charge, um, going through the AR management, denials management, bad debt process, the refund process. Those are all part of revenue cycle functions. One of the things that we need to do today is to shift our revenue cycle paradigm. It used to be that our post-service was our most important thing. We centered on that, getting the bills out the door, collecting the receivables, um, denials, all of that. We need to shift that paradigm into realizing that if we do things in our pre-service and during our delivery of services, that our post-service is going to be energized and it's not going to be as difficult and it's going to be streamlined. One of the things in the pre-service and the service delivery is complete accurate data collection. It has to start at that registration. The charge capture process and for post-service work to be streamlined, it has to be efficient and it has to be designed to eliminate rework. So let's talk about that revenue cycle process. We've got our intake, our registration. Is the quality of the information being obtained at registration correct and accurate? Because this drives the rest of our revenue cycle. The process oftentimes at registration is lengthy, it can be complicated, and it can be cumbersome. Patients are having to answer the questions, they're standing there, they're trying to find insurance cards, and there are more people coming in and getting in line. This is causing registration people to try to skip through some of the questions maybe. One of the things that you want to do is give your staff a script. If they can follow the script, it is much easier to go through with all of the clients coming in. You want to be sure that those changes that that patient is telling you at registration are being entered immediately. Another thing that you want to do is take a look at your registration accuracy. Have some metrics monitor those metrics and communicate the findings to the staff. The next step is the benefit check and the eligibility. Are you using an automated eligibility system so that you have real-time verification? With having real-time verification for that patient obligation, you can do financial counseling up front. It's not going to be a matter of when the bill goes out, when the bill is adjudicated, and now I can call the patient. You can do this up front. The patient is going to know what their responsibility is, and it's going to be much easier for that patient because they know up front there are no surprises. Do you have expectations about what the timely completion is for a prior authorization. Are these being obtained prior to the treatment? Okay, so you do have expectations. You do have things to follow. You do have things in place that these prior authorizations are to be gotten prior to treatment. Are they enforced? How many times are patients coming in without that prior authorization. This is a dissatisfier for the patient and it also makes your accounts receivable grow. As I said, financial counseling at the time of service, that is a very important piece, as well as collecting that copay when the patient comes in. Um, that pre-service counseling and for the new patient especially is important. Patients want to know what their responsibility is. You say, oh, we encourage copays and our, our staff do an excellent job. Do you have any metrics to show that yes, they are collecting upfront? Yes, 
you know, we are encouraging that. Is it simple for the patient to make a payment at the time of service? Or can they also pay for past services? Okay, I'm here to pay my $20 today for the visit that I'm about to have, but I also have a bill out there. Can I pay that? Is it easy for the patient? That is part of delivering the service, is to take that stress off of the patient, put it up front so that it's easy. And as we know, the business office represents the last opportunity for charges to be modified prior to it going to the payer. That business office staff needs to work with the other department. Um, we highly suggest an integrated revenue cycle team. Um, you need to have significant business office representation on that team and standard work processes for the activities because as we said, they are the last opportunity to make sure that that bill is correct before it goes to the payer and goes patient gets their EOB. The denial process, do you have denial management? Is it a key element of the revenue cycle? Do you know what your top denials are? Can you, is it something that can be corrected? When your when account hasn't been paid, are your staff investigating the reasons and resolving the issues? Or are they just simply generating a duplicate claim because, you know, it didn't get paid, we'll just send it in again. If you say, oh no, our staff is investigating, are you sure that they're doing that? The other thing that you should do is sort and prioritize your denials. Um, do it by the amount, you know, being the largest amounts and the oldest date. Because if these claims are being denied, you want to get them corrected as quickly as possible before the timely filing is over. And then also, do you have a write-off policy? Most facilities do have a write-off policy. Um, it will tell you how much can be written off, what is that maximum, maximum amount, and who is the authority to write it off? Are these, be, these collection policies being followed, or are we able to get quite a few things written off with circumventing the system. One of the things management's goals and expected benefits create a an integrated approach to the to the revenue cycle. It helps with the integrity and the organizational alignment. One of the things that you want are common performance goals and metrics. Develop a well functioning connected revenue cycle team. And when I say connected, it's one that is people are able to come to the team to to get resolution to issues not one where they're pointing fingers oh it's registration's problem oh it's the business office problem oh it's you know you want them to be connected you want to use internal benchmarks to help monitor and improve your process the other thing is you should have a shared sense of accountability for that revenue cycle performance. It is not just the revenue cycle team that's accountable. It is the entire revenue cycle staff from pre-registration through collection. You should be collaborating with other departments to enhance that revenue cycle performance. If there is something you know, you're getting denials for something and you can't, you, you know why it is and if you just change this, it'll go through. Now, take care of it at the source, not on the back end. The revenue cycle should be an efficient working environment. It should be something that everyone there can say they can efficiently help the patient. And always focus on prevention, upstream versus downstream processes. So in other words, if there is, a, is something that isn't quite right, go to the source, get it corrected, you know, make it efficient so that on the back end of the process, they can also be efficient. Prevention is the best medicine. Thank you for listening to this webinar today um, regarding the revenue cycle management. If you do have any questions, my name, phone number, as well as my email address are available on the screen. Thank you.